Let's talk about the return declare and go to statements. The return statement can be used to return the control of the program execution back to the environment it was called from. When a return statement is used within a function, it will stop the execution of that function and will return the given argument. So for example, if we had a function called sum, we can add the return statement here and the return statement just ends the execution of the function and returns the value of the expression that it's given to. You could give complex expressions here or you could give a simple expression that is just a variable. So you could put into a variable called z and just return it that way now as mentioned the return here will not stop the execution of the script it will just stop the execution of the function and it will pass the control back to where it was called from so for example if we call the function and assign it to a variable something like x equals to sum 5 and 10 and then echo x and then right after we could do echo break line and echo hello world we refresh the page we're going to get 15 and hello world so as you can see the return used within this function does not end the execution of the script it just ends the execution of that function and returns the value of the expression that it's given to and then it continues the execution of the script however if you use the return statement in a global scope meaning outside of the function it will just stop execution of the current script so if we put the return right here notice that this will no longer run and the script execution will end right here so we're still going to get the 15 but the hello world will no longer be printed notice here that i did not specify the expression here that's because the expression here is optional and if you don't specify anything then the null value will be returned Let's move on to the declare statement. You've seen me use the declare statement in one of the previous videos where I turned on the strict mode. There are currently three directives, the ticks directive, encoding directive, and strict types directive. The tick directive is just an event that occurs for tickable low-level statements in PHP that are executed by the parser. What that means is that when PHP script is executing, it executes a bunch of statements, right? And most of these statements cause something called a tick, which is kind of like an event. But not all statements are tickable. For example, if we have have something like x equals to 3, y equals to 5, and then z equals to x times y. Each of these statements here cause a tick. You could register a custom function to execute on each tick. So for example, we can do that by doing function on tick. And here we can just echo out tick with the break line. And then we can call the register tick function and set on tick here. Now we're ready to use the declare statement. And the syntax of declare statement is just declare. And then we put the directive in here. And that is ticks equals sign and the number. And this number here tells PHP how many tickable statements should pass before it actually triggers that tick or an event. And before that register function runs. So in this case, we want to make a tick on every tickable statement. So let me show you an example. Let me delete this from here. And let's create a variable i equals to 0, length equals to 10. And let's do a simple loop here while i is less than length. Echo i++ plus plus with a break line. We refresh the page and we're getting a bunch of ticks printed on the screen. And we set this to something like 3 and we refresh the page. Now we're seeing less ticks. So as you can see, there is a pattern here. After every three statements, it will trigger the tick. The encoding directive can be used to specify the encoding per script, but you should not use this and probably won't ever need it. You won't need the ticks directive either. It does not have many use cases. One that I can think of is to do some sort of benchmarking or profiling to see how efficient your code runs. So I would not worry about these two directives. You probably won't use them. The third directive, which is strict types, is what you might want to use if you want to have strict type checking. We discussed this in one of the previous videos where we talked about type system and casting, but here is an example. Let me delete this and let's declare strict types equals one. And let's just create a function called sum that just returns the sum of two variables. If we do echo sum 5 and 10, this will return 15 and everything works as expected. If we change one of them to a string data type, now we're going to get an error because we have the strict type checking and we're expecting the type of the variable x to be integer, but we're passing in string. One thing to note about the declare statement is that it will apply to everything right below it. If you include this script file to another file, then the declare won't apply to that other file. You would need to declare it there as well. When you declare the strict types in a file and if you call this function from another file that does not use the strict types then even if you pass the wrong type php will try to do the type conversion for you so it's important to know that if you want to have the strict types enabled for the file that calls this function you need to declare the strict types one in that file as well i'm just going to quickly show you how i can include one file into another and it's kind of a setup for the next video where we're going to talk about how to include php files so i'm going to create a, another file here called foo.php 
PHP and I'm going to require index.php and I'm going to call sum 5 and 10 and let's delete this from here let's refresh the page and we need to go to the food.php and we get 15 so everything is working as expected now if I change this to string let me close that out and zoom in a bit if I change this to string and I refresh the page we're no longer getting the error that means that this strict type declaration only applies to this file so if you use this function within this file then it will apply the strict types but if you use this function outside of this file then the strict type checking is not being checked unless you do declare strict types equals one and now this will cause an error so with that being said let's move on to the go to statements and that's all you needed to know about the go to statements this is it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it if you like my tutorials please give this video a thumbs up share and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one